if you are disputing using Metro 2 and you're not getting anywhere with these letters, you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to tell you some of the main reasons why your disputes seem to be just spinning in the wind. So let's get into it. I want to say if you are new to this channel, welcome. So we're getting into it. The number one reason that I'm seeing of why like a lot of disputes are just kind of dead in the water as soon as you send them out and you're not getting responses or you're getting stall letters. Like you know like you sent out like a really good dispute letter that should have gotten you more than what you got back which was probably like nothing. If you are a subscriber then you already know that I love me a good visual. I'm a visual learner myself so I created this Word document just to kind of leave this stuff to you guys and then I'm going to go over it. Number one, Automatic Dispute Processing Systems eOSCAR. Explanation. The three major credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, often use an automated system called eOSCAR, Electronic Online Solution for Complete and Accurate Reporting to Handle Disputes. When a consumer submits a dispute, it is often processed through this system. This is how it works. eOSCAR reduces the dispute to a simplified code that is sent to the creditor or data furnisher. The creditor then confirms whether the reported information is correct. This is your dispute process. Because this system is highly automated, disputes might not receive a thorough review, especially if they appear to be template-based or lack detailed evidence. So first we're gonna talk about eOSCAR and the codes that they did generate um, from their disputes. So for instance, like if you're using the Metro 2 like software, which they're great, I love them, I definitely know, and are witness to them having their place in credit repair, I just don't think that it should be used alone. Okay, but anyway. You get your Metro 2 software or website or whatever, AIs pitch you out a Metro 2 letter from your credit report. So when you send that out to the credit bureaus, they were, they're going to automatically run that through their eOSCAR system. eOSCAR is going to determine those codes because that's the reason why they make the Metro 2 um, code letters for eOSCAR. So eOSCAR recognizes those codes. Every code that you are calling out and calling into dispute, eOSCAR is going to pick that up, be it one Metro 2 code that's in violation or three or four. You may get three or four codes. So they're going to reduce that whole dispute down to a code and send the code over to the actual creditor or collection agency that you are disputing with. Now, if it's like late payments that you're disputing, then if the code for late payments is one, they're going to send code one over for Tina Smith, you know, could you please like investigate this or verify this being accurate? They're not saying that Tina Smith is disputing this. She says that on August the 24th, you pinned her as being late, but she was not late. She paid her bill on XYZ date. They're not saying all that. They're just doing it that way. So this would be the reason why your dispute would not get like a proper or thorough investigation because eOSCAR is just the computer sending over codes. It's not sending in all that good hard work that you did to create your dispute letter. So there's that. And then there's also the fact that you have to have some type of supporting documentation or good dispute reasons if you don't have evidence. You see what I'm saying? So you can't just send in a dispute letter saying that XYZ is incorrect, you have to be able to tell why it's correct and how it's correct. So you got to put some some really like work and strategy into your disputes so that you can be taken seriously. So that's like the quick version of me explaining this. I literally probably could talk about this particularly for like an hour. But for the sake of this video and the sake of you not clicking off this video before you get what you need, we're going to stop there. So number two is frivolous or irrelevant dispute rejection okay so let me read this explanation if a credit bureau determines that a dispute is frivolous or irrelevant it can dismiss the dispute without further investigation this often happens if the dispute is repetitive okay lacks new information or seems to be part of a bulk submission so if a consumer or a credit repair company submits multiple disputes at once using the same template, you got to watch that, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. Criteria for frivolousness. Common reasons for the labeling a dispute as frivolous include using vague or generic language, 
failing to provide supporting documentations or attempting to dispute accurate information repeatedly without new evidence. You have to be very strategic if you want to get the best results and if you don't want to be like still disputing the same stuff after a year. And I'm not saying that what I'm saying is 100% going to get everything removed off your credit report because that's not true. It's going to get you some good results, yes, but 100%, I'm never going to say that. So for instance, like if you are not necessarily like a credit repair specialist or company or whatever, and you're just a person and you are disputing some stuff on your credit report, which you have the right to. So like if you are sending in a dispute letter to dispute and let's say you send in one dispute letter and you get like them sending you back a verification letter that it's been verified. And then you send in maybe even a different dispute letter, but you're basically saying the same thing over again then you're really not probably going to get very far doing that because then you're crossed over into the realm of sending in repeated you know things without anything changing so disputing has to be a progressive thing if that makes sense so like you don't necessarily have to or need to have supporting documents on your first round of disputes unless you're just going in hard for the whammy and you know that you got it so your first dispute letter could be challenging them for accuracy on certain fields or codes that they're you know, reporting on, just whatever the case may be, right? You don't have to have anything supporting that just yet. But if they send that back verified or if they send back and they validate your debt or whatever like that, you're not going to send back in the same thing, but just in a different way because it will still put you in the lines of repeatedly sending in the same thing. What a lot of people don't realize or don't know is that the credit bureaus keep tabs and keep on file every dispute letter that you send in for these purposes because it's all about keeping a track record, right? And you should be keeping a track record of all of the dispute letters that you send out and also any responses that you get back from the credit bureaus. Now, don't send in stuff over and over again. Never say the same exact thing twice. And if you do say the same thing twice, make sure that the next time you say it, you say it louder, meaning that you step it up, you're throwing law in there all the time, and that you have something to support your claims. Like if you have late pays or missed pays and you're disputing and saying that you did not do that, what you should be adding to your disputes is something supporting that, like a bank statement or email confirmation saying that they, the company confirmed that they received the payment and things of that nature. So make sure that your disputing is continually growing and not insanity, like doing the same thing, expecting a different result kind of thing, or just kind of just throwing something out there and just praying that, oh my God, I hope it comes off this time. Yes, I've seen it happen a million times, but we're not banking on that. So we want to do it as strategic as we can the right way, because we don't want our stuff getting flagged as frivolous and irrelevant and not even being ran because Equifax is really good for this. If they think that you're frivolous, they won't even say anything to you. You'll be like sitting there doing your disputes and you'll be waiting 30 days, 45 days and not get anything and not know why. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is those generic letters. So like there are so many letters out there for you to purchase and lots of free letters. Like I have a lot of free stuff on my website, but like if you download anything, any of the letters off my website, please tweak them, tweak them. Like I'm old school. This year is my 18th year in this business. If I print, if I do like a dispute, let me try to hide this. I send out a dispute. Best believe when I print it out, like I'm taking like a pen, it's like a marker pen, and I'm writing, I'll probably write like a paragraph or something on this, telling them whatever it is that I need to tell them on this. Like I have these stamps that I use to like stamp. This one says, failure to perform a proper investigation will result in legal action. Like I have like so many different stamps and it's red too, that, you know, to get attention and to not get thrown into e Oscar system when I choose not to be. So there's that. Um, and last but not least, we have template letters and bulk submissions. So I'll read this. Credit bureaus are trained to recognize disputes that come from template letters or appear as part of a bulk submission. These are often used by credit repair companies and consumers who are disputing multiple items simultaneously. If a credit bureau detects that a dispute is not personalized or seems to be a mass effort, they may categorize it as less credible or even frivolous. Using a standard 
template without customizing it or failing to provide specific relevant details about your dispute can reduce the chances of it being taken seriously. Credit bureaus may see these disputes as attempts to gain the system rather than legitimate challenges. So for me, I'm all about the legitimate challenges because just over the years, I've seen what it does. I've tried lots of different strategies, especially like in my younger years of disputing. Like I remember when I would literally like just throw something at the tree and try to see what falls off the type disputes in the beginning years ago. So in a nutshell, if you have hired a credit repair company to dispute for you, that is fine. I love credit repair. I'm a credit repair company myself. And there's nothing wrong with hiring someone if you don't have the time or want to do it, do it for yourself. That's fine. But make sure that the credit repair company is at the very least offering you access to view your actual dispute letter so that you can clearly see that they're not sending in just like one, one or two sentences. You don't know how many times I've seen that where they're just saying like two sentences and saying the same thing every month over and over again. You know what I'm saying? And some companies will use like the same templates verbatim. The only thing that will change in the template is the account name, the account number, and like the balance and things like that and your name on the dispute template. So you gotta make sure that if you're hiring a company that your dispute letters are custom to you and your specific round at that time. Don't send in the same stuff that's like reiterated and um, those templates that are vastly used don't do that always customize and tailor things for your specific account and make sure that all of your disputes like i said always progress upward okay never stay in the same upward always kick it up a notch every round kick it up a notch okay so so yeah, and about the credit bureaus being trained to watch out for these things. You think that you got some game out here or whatever, or you learned some game from some guru or something on the internet. I mean, that's all fine and everything, but you gotta think about it too. Like credit bureaus have their own game, you know, because they have to protect their business and their information and all that stuff as well from people who are obviously filing disputes. So make sure that you are on top of your dispute process, whether you hire the company or whether if you are doing it for yourself. So I hope this video helped you guys. And um, until the next video, we definitely will talk soon. Please leave your comments in the comment section. I promise to respond. If you do leave a comment and I don't respond within a couple of hours or so, check the description. There is a number there that you can send a text message to and I will respond a whole lot quicker to that. So until the next video, we will talk soon. Bye.